In today's episode of the Perform Presents podcast, I have an interesting guest here with me today. I'm with Anoop Shishadri, and he's hailing over as the VP of Growth at RouteSpring. And at RouteSpring, they're really looking at a very interesting topic. They're looking at centralized payments for business travel. So today we want to be, you know, diving deeper what it actually means, you know, who's benefiting and how uh, Anoop is thinking about growth for the company. So Anoop, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. No worries. So, you know, give us that, you know, uh, 360 overview. What is RouteSpring all about? Sure. Uh, yeah. So uh, like you rightly said, like RouteSpring is a travel management company, mainly focusing on uh, optimizing the centralized payments for all travel. So what that basically means is that uh, uh, companies spend a lot of admin time in processing and reconciling uh, the payments for the travel uh, and on the traveler side, they, they have to keep track of all the receipts themselves and then claim for reimbursement and they have to wait for the reimbursements as well. Neither the company prefers to, to spend that admin time and neither the traveler prefers to put all the big expenses on their credit card and wait for the reimbursements. So the larger uh, ask here from the market is to enable the centralized payments for the uh, travelers and the company so that they, they spend less of admin time and focus more on the, the job they intend to do while they travel. Right. So right. we have created a very lightweight travel management software which allows companies to configure centralized payment methods uh, which uh, work very efficiently in terms of uh, paying for all the travel. And we, we are also uh, launching like a fluid pay uh, feature wherein the companies can issue credit cards uh, or smart cards, I would say, to, to the travelers. And uh, even if for other things outside of just flight hotel and car bookings, they can, they can use those cards to pay for any other business spends that they intend to do. Right. Oh, I can see. Very cool. And uh, what types of businesses do you think benefit the most? Is there like a certain size, employee size that they need? Is there, you know, certain industries that are very travel prone that you've been working with? Maybe give us an insight who's benefiting most from RockSpring. Sure. Uh, yeah. In terms of the, the types of businesses, I think the, uh, the most companies who need such a solution is where they are you they are hiring contract workers or part-time workers who are not essentially uh, earning uh, a lot to put put things on their personal credit cards right so these are so-called gray collar workers you would say like uh, who are traveling in the field for maybe uh, visiting retail stores for merchandising purposes or say uh, uh, sales or they are technicians who are going to install like audio video uh, set up in, in the uh, business conference rooms and things like that, or traveling nurses. Uh, so the, the companies who have huge gray collar workers uh, would benefit the most because there the need is really hard. And the traditional way of handling these things that, that they, they will hire one or two people in the company to manage all the payments for, for all the travelers. And which becomes, which becomes um, very painful if the company is growing and uh, it just goes out of hand to manage all those things. And in that case, RouteSpring comes into very good play there. Um, and uh, it, it just makes their life much easier. They don't have to spend any admin time managing the payments. They can give freedom to the travelers to book on their own uh, using the corporate credit card without ha company having to give them any credit card to them. That makes sense. And who would you typically say is the one, the champion within the companies that is saying, okay, we need something like RouteSpring. Is that somebody, so let's say in finance, is that somebody in accounting? Is that somebody on the HR side of things? Like, you know, who is just saying, hey, we need RouteSpring? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Uh, I think the decision actually comes from the finance, but yes, uh, the as far as the product champion goes, it's uh, mostly someone in the operations team who is, dealing with such a uh, large number of travelers, for them, it becomes very painful to uh, manage all these payments and maintain that efficiency level in the operations because their job is to really run the operations and not get into the admin stuff uh, as much. So uh, the, the product champions are typically the operations folks. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So how do they learn about RouteSpring? What is 
um, sort of the typical um, journey that they go through, or in other words, the client acquisition channel that you guys leverage the most in order to grow RockSpring? Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, mostly organic and word of mouth. Uh, mm -hmm. So the initial customers that we have had, they were very happy using the product. They saw it, they, they saw the value just immediately. Uh, so they even appreciate that quickest time to value. Uh, most other travel companies, they don't really um, optimize on giving the value quicker. They go through that all that like sales demo and product demo kind of uh, stuff before they make a decision. Uh, so uh, uh, it's it's organic. So if you search for like uh, uh, travel management with centralized payments, you would see RouteSpring is uh, first. Uh, if not first, it's all uh, on the first page at least. Mm -hmm. uh, so people find us organically and through word of mouth from our customers. And uh, uh, we have been very successful on the review sites as well, thanks to our customers. They, they are very satisfied with the product and uh, they are sharing some good reviews on these popular review sites. And that becomes another channel for us to uh, get, uh, get the leads. Very cool. Okay. And um, now if you say sort of there's a lot of inbound people finding you through keywords, for example, as you were mentioning, um, what role do you attribute to the website? Like how do you as a sort of VP of growth think about the website? What role does it play? It's, uh, uh, it's like uh, you are going for a job interview, right? Uh, so the, the website speaks on this website is kind of a resume for RouteSpring. So it, it gives out all the details that we do. And uh, whosoever is looking for such solution, they are essentially looking at what skills this individual has or this company has similar to that like recruitment process that we go through. The jobs to be done is one of the frameworks. So I, I think uh, the website plays the role in describing the jobs we do mm -hmm. and uh, how we can uh, solve the problems or do the job at what the prospects are looking for. So really speaking to the buyer persona there. So uh, we have defined a niche of optimizing for centralized payments. Uh, so that's, that's the niche that we focus on. So if anyone who is really looking for that kind of a solution, not just, not just travel management, but travel management for handling the, the payments, Yep. they will see that, yeah, this is the company for us. So it's kind of a tailoring the website to the audience that we really want to address to um, and uh, make sure that they understand what we are intent to showcase ourselves as. Very cool. Um, and, you know, we mentioned the website there. So, you know, a lot of people are always, you know, never content, let's say, with their website, a lot of growth marketers. Um, you know, how do you, I mean, how do you even relate to the website? Because you, know, you VP of growth, like what does it entail? Like, is it more marketing heavy? Is it very sales heavy in RouteSpring? Maybe give us a sentence on that. Um, and um, yeah, maybe let's start there. Like, you know, how do you define the role at v, as a VP of growth? Is it very marketing or sales driven in your organization? Uh, it's kind of both, a little bit of mm -hmm. both, but I will say it's it's slightly heavier on the marketing side. Uh, mm -hmm. We we adopted product-led growth last year. Uh, and before that, we were kind of slightly sales-driven. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have seen benefits of product-led growth. Uh, people want to have the feel of the product. You know, before they make a decision, they want to see whether this product will solve our need or not. They don't, they don't want to make a decision based out of a PPT. Uh, presentation deck, you know, so they, uh, by opening up the uh, platform, they can uh, jump onto the product, see how it is working. But now the question is, how do we get to those people who are looking for such a solution, right? So it, then their marketing comes into play. So uh, bringing out more content on the website, uh, working on SEO optimizations, uh, review sites is one of the great, uh, great win for us. Uh, so making sure we are present on uh, all the popular review sites and uh, all the customers are sharing feedback there. And we have had a lot of happy customers. So uh, reviews, we are having, having great reviews on the review sites. So if you really see on the, on, especially on g2.com, you'll see that uh, uh, RouteSpring comes on, um, as the highest uh, user satisfaction company software. Uh, and then uh, also on easiest to use, it's number one. And if you look at the top rated overall uh, 
softwares become as number five. So making sure that there is a lot of social proof as well in the market. Uh, Sense. And, and what do you think? You're speaking about social proof there. What do you think on the website? Let's say if people learn about you guys at the very moment, what do you consider like a strength of the website versus where do you see sort of maybe even room for, for improvement? Like sort of, you know, what, where do you see sort of, you know, yeah, like I say, uh, the route forward for the website? Yeah. Yeah. Social proof is uh, very important. So uh, like I said, like uh, people want to see uh, one, one is that, is will the product work for them? So one is that, and other is, are there other players similar to our businesses who are using RouteSpring? That's another question that many people have, and what are they saying about RouteSpring? So uh, if you go on our website, you will see that there are some of the key reviews we have highlighted on the website, just so that they have a, a sense of what other people are saying and make a judgment based on that, that yes, RouteSpring has an experience in uh, dealing with such things and they have a good experience of handling payments and giving user satisfaction, customer satisfaction in general, mm -hmm. and which, which plays a lot of big role in uh, decision-making processes. Very cool. And is there something, um, you know, where that you figured out like over the years now working with, uh, with RouteSpring, you know, that, it, that helps to sort of increase conversions from the website, any methodologies, any tools, any, approaches that you found to be helpful in driving more results from the pitch? Yes, we, we continue, continue to experiment on, on the messaging that we give and the kind of layout we have, what information should go first, what information should go below, what information can go in some other pages, not on the homepage and uh, things like that. So we, we keep tweaking uh, from time to time and see what's, what's working. So it's it's a lot about experimentation to really get to the that level where uh, you start to see conversion rate as as you would expect and kind of keep improving on that. So uh, it's a great exercise to keep experimenting on that. Even mm -hmm. just the tagline itself uh, can have a big impact on the conversion rate because many people they don't even scroll below uh, the the header that they see. Uh, so. Most of the people make the decision based out on what they see on the as a tagline. So, very cool. Now that gives us a, definitely a, a bit of an insight. I would like to to switch gears a little bit now that we learned about sort of what RouteSpring, uh, what <clears throat> what um, RouteSpring is doing. Uh, now that we learned about how you think about growth, I'm curious to learn more a little bit about your journey. Right, you've been in interesting roles. You've been a founder prior. You've been in product management. Now you're VP of growth. So, um, you know, my first question would be. How do you keep educating yourself? Now you're, you're, you're heading up growth. Like, is there any, like, I don't know, communities, places where you like to read, uh, mentors? Like, what's your way of, you know, keep growing? That's a wonderful question. Yeah, uh, I won't say that it's an easy, easy way to do anything there, but <laughs> uh, I read a lot of books. So every every time I, I, have, I hit a problem, I try to see if there is anything out there in the, in, in the internet and most often I just buy a book and read it so uh, as far as growth goes um, I read uh, traction uh, obviously awesome uh, product-led growth product-led onboarding uh, and things like that and also in product management also I read a bunch of books which kind of give a good insight on how product-led growth would uh, work uh, from the product standpoint. Uh, so yeah, I, I read a lot of books uh, to, to stay up to date and that kind of uh, helps me uh, make a big leap in, even by having limited experience, I can jump on uh, by reading these books and go ahead uh, than other folks by reading these cool. books. Which, uh, which book on product-led growth did you, did you read? Just if somebody's listening and would like to bite the teeth, what was your favorite book in that direction to product-led growth? Yeah, there, there are two books. One is Product-Led Growth. The title itself is Product-Led Growth by Wes Bush. And other is Product-Led Onboarding by Remley John. These two talk about the product-led growth, what, what the, the journey should look like uh, for the customer in the product. Very cool. 
Now, as we're slowly coming to an end of the interview, I would have some rapid fire questions for you. You already took my first one away. The first one would have been to ask you what's the last book you read, but now you gave us already like five books. So <laughs> I want to spare us of this one. So the first question would be, what's one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? Yeah, it's uh, really working on optimizing the centralized payments and we will try to uh, see that what more we can do for the customers to really take away all that admin time that goes into handling of payments. If there would be no boundaries in technology, what's the one thing you would fix for your role today? Wow, well, that's a great question. Uh, I think uh, just reaching out uh, to as many customers as, as I can uh, and convince them on uh, the, the value proposition of RouteSpring, that would be great. <laughs> What's the last thing that kept you awake at night about the company? Well, uh, we are into business travel uh, industry, right? So uh, as you can see in the recent times, we have had a tough time last year uh, and year before that due to pandemic. So uh, it was challenging to, to stay, um, stay positive and see that growth is happening, growth is happening. But yeah, now we are seeing uh, some, some good traction out there in the market. Uh, people are coming back into uh, shopping for travel management softwares. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if, if, there is some other variant that comes in and it, it kind of uh, again disrupts the market. <laughs> uh, so uh, that is something that I have to keep watch on, like uh, what, are the, what are the trending things happening that might affect the business. And for the very last question, uh, if we're basically doing a little bit of time travel, right? Let's say we go back to the days of George Washington University, right? Um, so we go back to these days. Now you're heading out of uh, the uh, the education there into you know your further career. What's the one advice you would give yourself uh, for for that moment? Uh, I will say to be more patient. Uh, I think uh, I I am very impatient in general, uh, or I was impatient back in the day. Uh, so have patience, and uh, sometimes you just have to keep experimenting different things. Uh, some things work, and some things don't work. If things don't work, then uh, one shouldn't feel disappointed and uh, move on and don't get married to that idea so much that you spend some more resources of your own uh, to just to convince yourself that this will work, this will work, and uh, sometimes it doesn't work. So mm -hmm. you just have to be, have patience and uh, uh, move on when things don't work and try something else rather than sticking on to that one thing. Very cool. Anup, I really appreciate you took the time with us today to be a guest on Parfum Presents. I want to give you the very last word. If somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed about RouteSpring, what's the one thing that they should remember? Uh, RouteSpring is a very lightweight travel management solution. So if you have a lot of admin overheads and you're looking for something simplified uh, solution for managing your travels, RouteSpring is a place to go uh, where you can optimize your uh, payments and also automate many of the other things that you might do manually. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Python Presents. Thanks, Lucas. It was great to be here.